And in the class, we have a set of twins and two other sets of siblings. Hopefully, they won't fight. <laughs> uh, the students have degrees from 63 different colleges and universities. Most of the students have a, a major in health or um, some other uh, type of science major, and some are double majors. 14% have at least one of their majors in a non-science area, including anthropology, business, bioengineering, international rescue and relief, mathematics, religion, and Spanish. They've been members of Tri Beta Honor Society, Alpha Chi Honor Society, and numerous other honor societies. They've received almost every uh, honor imaginable. They've been on Dean's List, President's Honor Roll, Chancellor's List, Student of the Year, Top Achiever Award, and many other awards, and not just academic awards, but they've also received awards for research, sports, service, innovation, leadership, and music. They've had healthcare experiences shadowing physicians in just about every specialty from dermatology to radiation oncology. They've been health educators, nursing home volunteers, scribes, hospice volunteers, EEG techs, medical assistants, ophthalmology technicians, dental technicians, phlebotomists, home health aides, histology technician, physical therapy technicians, patient transporters, medical interpreters, and respite caregivers. They volunteered at health fairs and at COVID testing and vaccination clinics. They've worked as a pharmacist, a nurse, a dietitian, and as EMTs. These students have also done research in many areas, oncology, pulmonology, genetics, nephrology, infectious disease, gastroenterology, ophthalmology, obstetrics, mental health, urology, plastic surgery, and neuroscience. They've had publications and presentations at local, national, and international meetings. This is also a very musically talented class. There are many vocalists, many play the piano, others play the violin, viola, cello, flute, saxophone, clarinet, oboe, French horn, euphonium, trumpet, and guitar. They play the harp, percussion, drums, harmonica, and handbills. And they don't just play, they are talented musicians and they've won awards and competitions. The athletic ability of this class is very impressive. We have people who've been in cross country and track and field. We have swimmers, basketball players, flag football players, volleyball players, soccer players, skiers, tennis players, softball players, rock climbers, people who do water polo, snowboarding, gymnastics, golf, spike ball, pickleball, netball, hiking, backpacking, <laughs> ice hockey, floor hockey, surfing, weightlifting, skateboarding, scuba diving, ultimate frisbee, martial arts, cycling, badminton, rugby, fencing, wrestling, and boxing. They will be in great physical condition, but I'm not sure they're gonna have time to come to class. <laughs> they have had very interesting experiences. They've done farming, gardening, pollinated orchids, written short stories and fiction, been editor-in-chief of the school newspaper, published a novel, Members have composed music and released recordings, been a dancer at Disneyland, been actors, directors, and producers in live theater. There are several who crochet, do embroidery, quilt, and sew, and to make historical costumes. There are um, students who've done drawing, comics, digital art, painting, been an art camp counselor. They do cooking and baking and have made cooking videos did woodworking and made a guitar, do ceramics, fix broken electronics, built computers, competitively built rockets, won a medal for archery in an international competition, been on a team of women that developed a fuel efficient vehicle, been a pilot, learned Morse code, backpacked through Europe, climbed mountains, done an archeology span dig in Jordan, worked in construction, sealed asphalt, fabricated stone, operated a forklift, driven a sports car at Watts, Watkins Glen, been a zip line guy, juggled while riding a unicycle. <laughs> Maybe we should have had that for entertainment tonight. <laughs> They've done scorpion research, had a snake, been a taxidermist with 30,000 flesh-eating beetles. Coming to medical school will probably be safer than what they have been doing. <laughs> These students also have 
uh, demonstrated a lot of leadership ability. They've served as class officers and officers of many clubs on their campuses and universities. They've been student senators, community service leaders, student deans and resident assistants. They have uh, held church offices, been a pastor, preached sermons, and coached sports teams. As impressive as all of these things are, the thing that stands out most is that these students have demonstrated in many ways that they have hearts for service. They've been involved in church and civic organizations, fed the homeless, volunteered in orphanages and nursing homes, done refugee outreach, tutored students, done foster care outreach, been involved with fundraising, and participated in hurricane and earthquake relief. They volunteered for many organizations, including the American Red Cross, Boys and Girls Club, Habitat for Humanity, UNICEF, Read Across America, Meals on Wheels, Special Olympics, and Smile Train. They served internationally on short-term mission trips, as well as being student missionaries. They've served in Mexico, Belize, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, Panama, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, Haiti, Jamaica, Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Paraguay, Peru, Chad, Ghana, Kenya, Malawi, N Nigeria, Rwanda, South Africa, Uganda, the Czech Republic, Denmark, Greece, Italy, Slovenia, Russia, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Turkey, China, Mongolia, Nepal, Cambodia, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Japan, the Philippines, the Federated States of Micronesia, Palau, and Fiji. And I'm sure I didn't get all the places. They have already been making the world a better place, and they follow Jesus' command to go ye into all the world. These students are obviously very bright, very talented, and have great potential. And when you look at what they've already accomplished, it's hard to even imagine what they will accomplish after they become physicians. This evening is a special one as they begin their medical school experience. They are being dedicated to a sacred profession. They will receive a white coat, a symbol of someone that has dedicated his or her life to a healing profession. But here at Loma Linda University, they're not just being trained for a profession, but for a ministry. They will acquire knowledge and develop skills that will equip them to continue the teaching and healing ministry of Jesus Christ. Please join me as we pray. Lord, as we meet this evening for the white coat ceremony, we want to acknowledge your guidance in the past as well as your presence in this place. We meet to celebrate the beginning of the journey for the class of 2027. And we want to thank you for each of the members of this class, for their accomplishments in the past, for their parents, for their other family members, their friends, their mentors. And we would ask your special blessing on each member of the class to, for you to continue to surround them with your blessing, with your peace, with your love. We would also ask your continued blessing for the leadership of the school and for each faculty member for their clinical and their academic responsibilities. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you. 
praise the mountain fixed upon it, Mount of Irene. Good evening, everyone. I have the pleasure of introducing our speaker for tonight. Dr. Paige Stevens graduated from the University of Riverside with a Bachelor of Science in Biology. She then went to Loma Linda University School of Medicine, graduating in 2016. She received the President's Award at the time of graduation, which is the highest award that the school gives, and went from there to the Children's Hospital Los Angeles, where she completed a pediatric residency. She chose to do pediatric critical care and did her fellowship at Stanford University. She has served in numerous leadership roles during her residency and fellowship and numerous committees and um, has been a recipient of many awards. She serves on the Accreditation Council for uh, Graduate Medical Education in the Pediatric ICU Milestones and she serves it was a recipient of an awards during residency. She received the Outstanding Teacher Award, the Dolomud Award for, this is a mouthful, but Effective Application of Scientific Knowledge, Perceptiveness in the Care of Children, and Distinguished Qualities of Character. Uh, moving on to her fellowships, she received both awards for the Pediatric Intensive Care Fellow Teacher of the Year, as well as the Pediatric Residency Program Fellow of the Year Award. So as you can see, we have lots to be proud of in one of our alumni. Um, more recently, she has been doing some very interesting work in 
around the spiritual care of children and has received funding um, from several different nonprofits, uh, particularly on design and validation of a simulation-based instrument that develops both education and tools for spiritual care in children, which of course includes families also. Um, so what I can say is we're very happy to, happy to have Dr. Stevens with us tonight. She is uh, joining our faculty this summer, and we're thrilled to have her back. Thank you, Dr. Stevens. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Thomas, for that kind introduction and for the privilege of being here on this momentous occasion. It was not too many years ago that I was sitting exactly where you are, actually right over there. Um, I was filled with excitement, wonder, optimism, and admittedly a good amount of anxiety as to what exactly I was getting myself into. I'll be honest with you, after 11 years, which has included finishing medical school, residency, chief residency, and a fellowship, I'm now starting my first job as an attending here at Loma Linda, and I still have that same sense of excitement, wonder, optimism, and admittedly a good amount of anxiety as I come to work each day. You see, medicine is a field where it's all about lifelong learning. And your excitement, your wonder, your optimism, and yes, maybe even a little bit of anxiety will be what keeps you learning and growing and being the best physician you can be for your patients. So remember these feelings and embrace them. One of my passions is medical education. And as a wise medical educator, AKA my mom, who's sitting right over there, once told me when preparing a, a talk, you wanna tell them what you wanna tell them, then tell them, and then tell them what you told them. In other words, make sure you have a good set of learning objectives and really drive them home. So here it is, class of 2027, your first set of medical school learning objectives. Number one, recall the journey that brought you here and use it to drive you forward. Number two, Recognize the unique privilege that you have in training here at Loma Linda University. And number three, embrace the sense of wonder and awe that you have for medicine. So learning objective number one, recall the journey that you brought you here and use it to drive you forward. Each of you is remarkable. As Dr. Roddy went through some of the statistics for your class, I don't know if that didn't inspire you enough, but how about this? This year, there were 55,188 U.S. medical school applicants and only 22,712 positions. Just being here that you were, means that you are only one of 42% of students who are fortunate enough to matriculate into a U.S. medical program. I think the statistics for this program in particular were even more competitive than that, so congratulations. You've already put in the hard work to earn excellent grades, participate in extracurriculars, volunteer, gain work experience in the medical field, and so on. But more importantly, each of you has a personal story that inspired you to follow this dream. Maybe you were a patient yourself and were inspired by the care of your physicians. Maybe you experienced the joy of bringing healing on a mission trip. Maybe you have a parent who inspired you by their compassion and their joy for their career. Or maybe you're the first person in your family to attend college, much less graduate school. Whatever it is, God has used that experience to call you into this work and I hope you recognize and give thanks for that. One of my favorite quotes is that of the uh, author and theologian Frederick Buchner, who said, the place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. As we see so commonly in the events of the world today, the world has a deep hunger, and your passion and willingness to follow God's calling in your life is going to serve the world in profoundly meaningful ways. It is my hope that you'll use your passion, your work ethic, and the skills that you've honed over the years to continue learning and growing as you face the inevitable challenges that this career will throw your way. But in recalling your journey here, remember that it's not just you who's responsible for getting you here. Each of you has an army of people who have been loving you, teaching you, mentoring you, praying for you, and preparing you for the path ahead. Look around this church. Go ahead, you can stand up, you can wave, look around, say hi to your family real quick. <laughs> you can wave to the cameras for family who are maybe tuning in online. <laughs> 
We've got some good waivers up there, wow. <laughs> so remember these people. To the loved ones who are here, as well as those who couldn't be here today in person, who have been cheering for you and encouraging you every step of the way, thank you. Without your love and support, these students would not be here today, and they will certainly not succeed in the next four years without your ongoing encouragement. The next four years will be full of long nights and days of studying, long shifts working in the clinical environment, and many new successes and new failures. Remember the people who have brought you this far and rely on them to get you through this next new journey. Learning objective number two, recognize the unique privilege that you have in training here at Loma Linda University. So before you ask, Dr. Thomas did not ask me to include this learning objective. This is all, all on my own. I was fortunate enough, to grow, uh, fortunate enough to grow up in this area. This church was my home church. My mom has been a pediatrician here at the Children's Hospital for over 30 years. And I grew up attending white coat ceremonies, graduations, alumni weekends, and being inspired by what I saw this university accomplishing through the lives of its graduates. This is home. Now, because this was home, I felt like I needed to go out after finishing medical school and see other institutions. I went to some amazing campuses, learned from incredible mentors and teachers, and I wouldn't trade my experiences for anything. However, the thing that is, has always stuck with me is that Loma Linda has a very incredible and unique mission to continue the healing and teaching ministry of Jesus Christ. I want you to know how unique that mission is and what it means for a healthcare institution. If you haven't realized this already, you will very soon come to learn that healthcare is infinitely complex these days. It's so easy to lose sight of the real meaning and purpose of our work. When the days are long and seemingly overwhelming, you will have a home here that will remind you of your purpose and keep you focused on what really matters. Over the next four years, you'll have the privilege of learning from and working with people who value the ministry of Jesus and who earnestly seek to be his hands and his feet in this world. You will learn communication skills that will help you connect more deeply with your patients and go beyond the mere physical aspects of healing to address the psychosocial spiritual aspects of wholeness. You will take religion classes that require you to understand your own worldviews and beliefs on a deeper level. And you'll be surrounded by a community of students who chose this university because of its unique mission and who will become your best friends and confidants. When I think back to my time in medical school here at LLU, I'm overwhelmed by the gratitude that I have for this institution that shaped me into the physician that I am today. And it is my hope that you will allow the mission and purpose of this institution to shape and inspire you. Learning objective number three, embrace the sense of wonder and awe that you have for medicine. Seven years ago, Pastor Randy Roberts delivered my graduating medical school class's baccalaureate address entitled, Wow. The message was simple. We are uniquely blessed to be in a career where we encounter wow moments each and every day, but it's up to us to recognize those moments and continue to be inspired by them. Your first two years of medical school will be a lot of book work complex biochemical pathways to memorize, physiology pressure volume loops to make sense of, endless body parts to identify, and hundreds of thousands of conditions to diagnose and treat. There will be days when the list of things to learn and memorize feels overwhelming and far from wow inspiring. But if you can remember to take a step back and let yourself be awestruck by the complexity of the human body and how we are so fearfully and wonderfully made, it will serve you well. I think you'll find it easier to find a sense of wow when you start your clinical years and realize that the cellular mechanisms of disease and physiology concepts that you learned actually do translate to the day-to-day -day management of taking care of patients. Most importantly, I hope you experience the wow of connecting with your patients, learning their stories, listening to their fears, and comforting them in their times of greatest need. Because of these white coats that you're about to receive, your patients are going to trust you, they're going to respect you, and they're going to confide in you as part of a sacred physician-patient relationship that you will need to foster and protect. In this career, you will have the privilege in sharing in some of the most miraculous and awe-inspiring experiences in your patients' lives. And you'll also share in some of the most heartbreaking and painful experiences in their lives. Take the wow of that privilege very seriously.
and trust in God to use you in the ways that he has called you to bring hope and comfort to your patients. So that brings us to the end of your first set of medical school learning objectives. Let's see if you remember them. It's okay, there's no quiz today. Number one, recall the journey that brought you here and use it to drive you forward. Number two, recognize the unique privilege that you have in training here at Loma Linda University. And number three, embrace the sense of wonder and awe that you have in medicine. It is my hope that focusing on these learning objectives will give you a strong foundation to tackle the next four years ahead and serve as a reminder of your mission and purpose in medicine. I can assure you that the days that you spend here will be long, but the years will be very, very short. So make the most of your time here at Loma Linda. Learn everything you can. Serve your patients wholeheartedly and follow the calling that God has placed in your life to be here. Congratulations and thank you so much for allowing me to share this special moment with you. Okay, class, this is a moment we have not practiced. Um, family, if you can allow us just a few seconds, I'm gonna run through this, uh, the next few minutes with our class. As you know, it's been a busy week on our end. So class, just as a reminder, um, I'm gonna have you, let's see where Gabby, can we have our Gabby, Edith, um, Samantha, Rosalind, Thank you. So if you are on this side, I need you to make sure you keep your eye on Gabby and she will invite your row to stand when it's time for your row to stand. And then um, you will move towards the side of the window. This side, keep your eye on Rosalind. And so kind of look out for her. You will stand, we've got pictures because you know, we, we're thinking about you. Uh, you will go on the row, you will come up to the podium, and you will say your name. And then you will walk up the stairs. There'll be the coders will be up on the, on the platform. Find a coder who has no one in front of them. And then stand in front of them, give them your coat. Um, they will then coat all of you at the same time. Family, that will be your cue that you can clap. So we appreciate if you kind of keep it until that time, because otherwise we can't, we miss the names of the different um, students. So you will all stand, and Jonathan will probably be somewhere in the middle taking photos um, of you. As soon as the photo is taken of the group, you will single file down the stairs. And now you keep an eye on Edith and on Samantha, who will guide you back to the same row that you came. You don't even have to think that one through. They will help you, okay? Really simple. This is meant to be a very sacred moment. Um, it is a, a moment that we are praying over you as you receive your white coat. Dr. Thomas will now invite the coders class stay seated until she's done. Once we're done with that portion, um, Dr. Thomas will invite you all to stand, to come up and do the oath, and then we'll do closing prayer, okay? Okay, I'm going to introduce the faculty coders. Um, uh, first, we have Dr. Ricardo Peverini, who is our Vice Dean for Clinical Affairs and is a neonatologist. Uh, secondly, we will um, ask Dr. Dexter Frederick. Um, Dr. Frederick is um, probably um, our um, uh, long-awaited and um, really welcomed um, Associate Dean for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and his first week is this week, so um, uh, extra thank you for um, uh, being, a, being available for everything. <laughs> he is uh, an Associate Professor in both medicine and pediatrics. Um, Dr. Stacy Makonki is an Associate Professor in pediatrics, and she um, helps coordinate our pediatric education at the Advent Health Orlando campus. Um, welcome. And Dr. Paige Stevens, I introduce to you. Uh, next, uh, Dr. Francis Chan. Um, he is an associate professor in pediatrics and our chair of the Department of Pediatrics. Dr. Alfred Simmental, who is uh, our chair of our otolaryngology head and neck surgery. Dr. Bryant Nguyen, 
um, who is a professor in medicine, basic science, and emergency medicine. He, he heads up our pulmonary and critical care uh, division for the Department of Medicine. So um, thank you everyone for um, uh, coding and um, we will get started. Viviana De Leon Williams. Brooklyn Brown. Isaac Cervantes Villegas. Andrew Fay. Brandon Ching. Eva Yankee. Tyler Ko Yonimoto. Isaac Jew. Grant Tatsu Yonemoto. Jordan Klein. Shua Joe. Ryan Kenny. Austin Oliver. Sunghan Peck. Augustia Sarfo. Jonathan Correa. Eileen Fee Wynn. Jacob Ammon. Erwin Stuffel. Joseph Daniel Ionescu. Daniel Eng. Jacob Hauser. Micah Yu. Aaron Baluyot. Alan Marguerite Richards. Amy Acer Bishop Lazaro. Grace Mitchell. Kimberly Agilat. Allison Lynn. Elijah Hartman. Stephen Watson. Grady Diedrich. Timothy Tang. Ryan Dieter. Elizabeth Williams. Owen Fanner. Brian Hernandez Chombi. Aiden McConkey. 
David Shin. Chandler Din. Christopher Gleavy. William Zach Blackstone. Sarah Chan. Matthew Reuter. Kristen Simmental. Joel Carson. Chad Bailey. Dan Celestin. Kyle Gabriel Bungayan. Krolos Sharif Amin. Paddington Bugwa. Nino Spadashtu. Brian Wong. Adil Batiha. Luke Wandersleben. Amelia Darwaza Gomez. Hayden Sanders. Holly Christine Espinoza Anunciacion. Thomas Jesus Rodriguez. Luisa Barceria. Seth Richard Escara Maligate. Lucy Mary Ephraim. Andrew Tolan. Lee F. Elmir Gaston. Cameron Maciel. Janae Mitchell. Takudzwa Gavaza. Lauren Butler. Nathaniel Matei. Demar Fabel McLean. Go ahead. Donnie Desai. Yeah! Lowen Yip. Andrash Muranim. Connor Shell. Jacob Gerstein. Brenna Fillmore. Nathaniel Nguyen. Sydney Gwen. Ryan Lee. Kay Kim. Riley Martins. Hope Furukawa. Jacob Ulam. Jocelyn Castro. Nolan Nguyen. Sanaya Janan Hall Chun. Karana Martinez. Kimberly Kra.
Madison Truby. Jade Roberts. Joanne Lee. Faith Ajayi. Ashley Kemp. Casey Gon. Isabella O. Oh. Joshua Sejin Kim. Lauren Hahn. Rhonda Grekov. Ariella Sarkisian. Elizabeth Michelle Cannon. Alexandra Vaccaru. Emma Fenwick. Thomas Crary Simons III. <laughs> Noah Collins. Megan Marquez. Jabril Assis Salah. Hannah Moody. Woo! Rogan White. Laura Slusser. Elodie Manalo. Fatima Anaya Abdulhak. Allison Mayling Simmons. Taehyun Kim. Alexandra Tyler. Esther Yejin Kim. Elise O'Neill. Min Seo Kang. Kennedy Magner. Ethan Andrew Yokichi Edwards. Caitlin Schultz. Delanera Contoria. Blythe Armstrong. Jason David Hyunjun Chung. Daniel Sosenia Osorio. Charlotte Ishikawa. Justin Daniel Corral Yanez. Sonia Ninglun Kim Joy. Joan Park. <laughs> Alexander Ryo Hongo. Valentine Gisa. <laughs> Hyuna Park. Lucas Tanner Buller. Kaylin Mihe Chung. <laughs> Ra'el Kim. <laughs> Daniel Im. Jennifer Jinhee Kang. Wow. Jonathan Chunseo Yoon. Serena Shaw. Wow. Albert Duong. Jared Zervos. Timothy Ho. Vinicius Melo Vicente Silva. Brian Chan.
Sam Pelobello. Isaac Underhill. Elizabeth Folusha Oyelano. Marianne Gerbranius. Chelsea Elizabeth Thomas. Eleanor Hansen. Claudie Saupon. Anilse Joxana Castillo Sejo. Ashley Samuel, Miriam Khan, Daniel Kim, Anna Katarina Santos Sweat, Jean Carlos Gutierrez, Nathaniel Kim, Theo Richardson, Rebecca Minas Alexander. Natasha Thomas. Luke Drew. Joseph Larson. Delilah Drew. Quasi 24. Samuel Lin. Andrew Wee. Isaiah Sa. Kyung Kim. Hyojin Kim. Alana Chatra. Jillian Miller. Caitlin Rose Bradley. Lauren Yen. David Ochoa. Regina Leach. Henry Kazi, Andrew Walker Pelson, Daniel Wynn, Ivana Rakic, Danielle Nelson, Amanda Maria Castillo, Julissa Lee, Nathan Zhang. Okay. Okay, we are going to ask all of the people who are just coded uh, to stand and come up onto the stage. Uh, we will be doing the um, uh, oath, and then we uh, will have closing.
on the stage because there's a whole bunch of people out there that would like to get your pictures. So it'll probably take about four or five minutes after closing prayer. So come on up. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask all of you to read with me in unison. Okay, ready? Before God, these things I do promise. In the acceptance of my sacred calling, I will dedicate my life to the furtherance of Jesus Christ's healing and teaching ministry. I will give to my teachers the respect and gratitude which is their due. I will impart to those who follow me the knowledge and experience that I have gained. The wholeness of my patient will be my first consideration. Acting as a good steward of the resources of society and of the talents granted me, I will endeavor to reflect God's mercy and compassion by caring for the lonely, the poor, the suffering, and those who are dying. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life, I will not use my medical knowledge contrary to the laws of humanity. I will respect the rights and decisions of my patients. I will hold in confidence all secrets committed to my keeping in the practice of my calling. I will lead my life and practice my art with purity and honor. Abstaining from immorality myself, I will not lead others into moral wrongdoing. May God's kingdom, his healing power, and glory be experienced by those whom I serve, and may they be made known in my life in proportion as I am faithful to this oath. Amen. 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 Let's, let's have our close in prayer. Our loving Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the ministry of Loma Linda University that holds forth the motto, to make man whole. We are grateful for your providence of timing that brought this group of medical students in this space at this appointed time. We are grateful for the sacrifices of parents and grandparents and supporters who supported every medical student during their pre-medical journey. Today, O oh God, our students have promised by wearing their white coats to dedicate their lives to follow your example of furthering the teaching and healing ministry of Christ. May your Holy Spirit give each one of them a discerning spirit to make choices and decisions that would be congruent with getting them to the finish line at graduation and fulfilling their purpose. Lord, there may be times when they may be very wary. Give them the intestinal fortitude to push through one more round. Provide them extra grace and mercy in areas of their lives that will allow them to fly again. Sometimes, Father, they may wonder why they are here, and on those days, may they remember to read their personal statements and remember the passion that they brought at this point. Heavenly Father, transform their hearts to embrace characteristics of empathy, compassion, hope, faith, and love. May these Christ-like characteristics allow them to look after one another with compassion, empathy, and love. As we, as we depart today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. And to have you face towards you and give you peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen.
We'll allow, allow you to take pictures and then you are dismissed. <laughs>